What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing an in-depth look at how to set up your buttons. Button settings can be a little bit confusing. There's three different types to choose from. And when you change a setting, you know, what are you changing actually? How do you know? So in today's video, we're gonna look at all of that. And I'm also gonna give you a little CSS trick to make buttons look a little bit more even. All right, let's get started. So I'm here in my 7.1 site. I have three buttons here and I have one set to primary, one set to secondary and one set to tertiary. I have given them all the same styles. So they're all just the normal solid buttons. And let's go ahead and click on the brush tool up here to get to our site styles and I'll click on buttons. Now here we can change each of the three types of buttons. And I like to have my primary button be a solid. So I'll, I'll set it to fill and I just have it at square here. And I like my secondary buttons to be the outline. So the reason I like my primary buttons to be my solid buttons is because any system button will inherit the primary button styles. And what I mean by that is uh, auto layout section buttons, for example, will automatically inherit whatever style the primary button is. Same for newsletter blocks. And if you have a shop, your shop uh, checkout button is also going to inherit whatever the primary button style is. And then if you add something to the cart, your cart checkout button is also going to inherit whatever the primary button style is. So because I have it set to solid, all these different types of buttons are inheriting that style. So if I were to change the primary button to an outline, for example, all of these buttons would also change to outline. So, you know, on some websites, you might have kind of a, a lighter, more modern aesthetic where you wanted all those buttons to be outlined. But I do find for the majority of my sites, I like all those buttons to be solid and I like my secondary button to have an outline style. So let's go ahead and set that up. I want my primary button to be solid. So I'll flip over to secondary and now we can choose the outline option by going to no fill and I'm gonna leave it on rectangle and we don't see an outline because we need to increase the outline here. And I'll do two pixels. So now you can see I've added an outline here, but frustratingly, it adds the outline like around the button and now the button is bigger than our primary button. So when you have these two buttons next to each other, like this one just very clearly feels much bigger than this one. So we need to use a little bit of CSS to make sure that these buttons, you know, are the actually the same size. And the way that we can do that is by giving an outline to the primary button as well. So I'm actually going to jump back into site styles and go back to buttons. And for our primary button, since our secondary button has an outline of two pixels, we also want our primary button to have an outline of two pixels. Now, for some reason, by default, Squarespace just gives the outline color uh, to be automatically the same color as whatever the text color is. So there's no way in the site styles in the colors panel to change this to be different than the text color. It's just automatically set up to be whatever the text color is. So obviously, that's not something I want. I would want the outline color to be the background color. So we have to use some custom CSS in order to accomplish that. So I'm gonna hop over to my custom CSS panel. I can get there by going to website and then website tools and then custom CSS. Now you can also more quickly than that, if you just click anywhere in the side panel here and click the forward slash, then you can just search for the custom CSS window and that's a much faster way of getting there. So just a little pro tip there. So if I right click and inspect my button, that'll bring up my Chrome inspect tools and here is the element that I've selected. So this is the button element and we can see it gets a, a class of SQS button element primary because it is my primary button type. And then here are all the styles that are applied to it. So if I scroll down to this little section here, so this is showing that when primary button styles set to solid, it's targeting the site wrapper and more specifically the button inside of the site wrapper and it's giving it a text color of black. It's giving it a background color of white and then it's giving it a border color of the primary button text color, so black. And we don't want that. We would rather have the border color inherit the primary button background color so that it's the same. 
So this might be a little bit confusing if you're not familiar with CSS. And so I can just walk you through where each of these classes would be found. So the primary button style solid class, that's found on the body. Now the body gets a bunch of different classes added to it. And each of these classes is just sort of a signaler that uh, will kick in a different style. So when the primary button style is solid, it Squarespace knows that it needs to give that button a background color of you know whatever is set in the site styles. So there's a bunch of different classes here on the body. So it's kind of difficult to find, but if I just copy this, we can probably find it just by searching with Control F. Uh, oh, here we go, perfect. I just didn't need the period. Uh, the primary button style of solid you can see is added to the body. And then inside the body, remember it was targeting the site wrapper class. So here is the site wrapper and the site wrapper houses all of the elements on the page. So they're just targeting that class. And then inside of the site wrapper, they're finally targeting the specific button itself, the SQS button element primary. So it's using each of those different selectors to kind of like drill down and target this specific element. And so what we can do is just copy the same selectors that Squarespace is using to target this element. Um, and we'll just go ahead and paste that into our custom CSS window. And we need to open some curly brackets. And so like I mentioned before, the border color is using the primary button text color, but we would much prefer it to use the primary button background color. So I'm just gonna copy this whole selector here and we'll change background color to border color. So I'll paste that in and we're gonna change this to border color. And now you can see just automatically our button has changed and now its, its border color is matching its background color and now these two buttons are the same size. I like to set up my tertiary buttons as kind of like, a, almost like a text link style, but for a button. And the way that I do that is I'll click the paintbrush icon and we'll go to the tertiary button. And I'm gonna set the background to no fill. And I'm gonna do this text link option. And then I like to get rid of the horizontal spacing and then turn down the vertical spacing a little bit. And then here you can play with the outline thickness. And so I'm gonna do two pixels because that's, you know, it matches the other border of my secondary button. And then you can just play with this height, whatever you think looks good for the underline. But it's kind of cool. It's like this little inline like link style, but it's actually a button. The only thing that I don't like about it is the hover effect. I don't think that looks very good. I would rather just probably lower the opacity. So I'm gonna bring up my site styles panel and go to colors and then dark one, and we'll take a look at the tertiary button styles because buttons that don't have a background fill set have kind of funky color options. So you can see the tertiary button background color is set to white and the text color is set to black, but very clearly this text color is actually white. So for some reason, when buttons don't have a background color, the text color is actually the background color and the button text color is actually the hover text color. So you can see it turns black on hover. So I don't want the color to change as I hover over it. So I'm just gonna change this to white. And so now when I hover over it, you can see we're just getting the background color. So I'm just gonna use CSS to remove that background color um, because that's not the behavior that I want. So just sort of a strange <laughs> way that Squarespace has handled that hover setup but not much we can do about it. We'll just work around it. So uh, I've right clicked and inspected my tertiary button. So here we have the SQS button element dash dash tertiary. And so here we can scroll down to the color values. So they've targeted this uh, with the tertiary button style outline, site wrapper, and then the SQS button element tertiary. So very similar to how they targeted the primary button. They're doing the same thing for the tertiary button. So uh, for the background color, um, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this style and I'll paste it into my custom CSS window before my other styling there. I'm gonna open up some curly brackets. And so uh, I want to on hover, so I'm gonna add hover. I want this background to be transparent. 
And so now if I hover over it, you can see there's no more changing of colors. Now, uh, I do want the opacity to be lowered on, um, when I'm hovering over it. So I'm gonna write opacity and I'll set it to maybe like 0.7. And so now you can see we have a little bit of a fade out as it's hovered over. But this fade out happens really abruptly. So I wanna add a transition so that it happens a little bit more smoothly. And if we inspect the button again, we can look at the transition settings currently on the button so we can match them for our opacity. So if I scroll down here, we'll see that there's already a transition set that transitions the background color. And it's the duration of this transition is 0.1 seconds. And then the easing is linear. And then there's also the same thing for the button text color, but there's nothing for opacity. Now we don't need this transition for the background color or in the text color because those things aren't changing anymore. So what I'm gonna do is just copy this transition and we're gonna just replace it with opacity instead. Now I don't wanna add the transition to the hover state. We need to add it to the default state. So what I can do is kind of take advantage of the fact that Squarespace, the custom CSS window uses the less preprocessor. So if I wrap my hover, if I add an ampersand to, before my hover and then wrap it in the curly brackets of this outer selector, I can now just add my transition to the normal state. And then here we have the hover styles. So again, this is very specific to less um, and it's just a nice thing that we can take advantage of in the Squarespace custom CSS window. So I've removed one of the transitions. So now we're just left with one and we want this to be opacity. Um, so now as we hover over it, the fade out happens more subtly. It's not just immediately changing like it was before. So there you go. That's how I change my buttons in Squarespace. Again, being very intentional about the primary button styles because it does have such an influence on all the other button styles throughout the site, including the header button. For my secondary button, if I wanna have an outline, that's what I like to do. And for my tertiary button, I do like using this link option on sites. So this is the CSS that I use to style the tertiary button. So that was, you know, long-winded and not as organized as my normal tutorials, but I hope it was, you know, jam-packed with helpful tips and information. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm really striving for 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I don't think there's any way that's going to happen, but with your help, I might be able to get there. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one.